gets the win. It's well, poster boy of recurve archery of the last decade, Brady Ellison, who will get knocked out. Semi-final number one in the men's recurve competition. Italy versus Spain. Let's go down and meet the athletes. So Marin Espoli is a legend, Olympic team gold medal in London 2012, plus uh, two silvers, uh, Beijing team in 2008 and um, individual silver in Tokyo 2020. But uh, in terms of current form, Alvarino is the man to beat at the moment. Yeah, I think he's even uh, world number one right now. Um, so he's definitely, uh, this season he has been the man to beat and uh, he has been a very difficult to beat certainly has and it will be Alvarino to get this semi-final underway here in Colombia like you were right uh, Kareem uh, this might be a very high scoring match you know, it baffles me how the archers can come straight out and shoot the 10 straight away a little bit of Bo Kwondo there he looked like he was actually guiding that over to the right there uh, yeah I think it's because the, the image was from the front so it looked like he was guiding it to the right but he was actually pulling it to the left so he was actually trying to get that arrow in the middle but uh, yeah I think a little too late it's a good shot here. As Nespoli is in the middle of the target at the moment. Beautiful 28 there from Alvarino, but uh, a 10. And the first two set points go to the Italian. Yes. Amazing start to the match. We expected high scores, and that's just what we've got. 28 plays 29. Nespoli with a two-point lead. Now, Chef, the, the standard of the quality is exceptionally high. That's what we were expecting. At the moment, the conditions still look very, very good. And if anything, the wind has died off a little bit. But we've still got this threat of thunderstorms, not just rain, thunderstorms. Yeah, so if it rains, that's OK. If it, if it starts uh, uh, getting a bit windy, that's uh, still OK. If there's actual lightning, I think they'll stop the competition and then we'll have to wait until the lightning's over because effectively um, they are holding uh, lightning catchers like uh, the, the lightning can hit on the bow and then that's not a great time yeah safety comes in to play that is for sure uh, when things start sparking up in the skies and if it starts to get a bit windy i think uh Mauho will maybe be happy about that because he shoots, uh, typically speaking, he shoots a very heavy bow, a very heavy draw weight, um, which means that his arrows don't have as much of a curve uh, in their flight and uh, therefore are not as, uh, not as affected by the wind. Heavy bow weight, faster arrow. Alvarino trailing by two set points. We'll get things underway in the second set. Yeah, Mauro is just on it right now. I don't think he is uh, he's leaving anything to chance in this match. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can see him shake from uh, from the draw weight, um, and he he always does this, and it, it looks really unnerving as a as a spectator. But I'm sure that he feels comfortable enough with it to still uh, hit the middle, or he wouldn't have had such a high draw weight. Provisional 28 there for uh, Alvarino could get marked up to a 29, and uh, now. It's an all-important measure yeah, on that I, second arrow. I think it's in uh, from what I could see where I'm sitting, but um, that's still he's still trailing Mao and Espen, but uh, it doesn't look like he's too concerned about it. He's just uh, chilling with his coach. So. Very relaxed approach in between sets to keep his uh, nerves down. Well, he thought it was in. I think that's confirmation, isn't it, Chef? Yeah, for me it is. Uh, I, at this point, I uh, think the, the judge will agree with me uh, without having have, without even having to take his magnifying glasses out. Well, who would disagree with Chef Van der Berg? Many, many people. <laughs> oh, you just got married, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. You've got someone living with you that disagrees with <laughs> you. Congratulations, by the way. Just a couple of weeks Thank ago, you. right? Yeah, two weeks ago, yeah. So Miguel has a, uh, a bit of bandage around his... Oh, hold uh, on, before we get to that, can we get, you can at least name check your Norwegian wife. Oh yeah, well, her name is Kristen and she's lovely. <laughs> I'm sure she is. Uh, sorry, you can carry on <laughs> yeah. with archery now if you like. Um, Miguel Alvarino has a, a bit of bandage around his middle finger. Um, and you would say, oh, that's not good, he must be injured. But he always has that around his finger. So uh, whether it is something that he's grown used to or um, if it's something that he has to shoot with because of some chronic issue um, it's not a reason for concern because he's been using it the whole season and he's been shooting great start with a nine in set number three so I think a couple clicks on the side of Mauro Nespoli wouldn't uh, wouldn't be a bad idea. He's uh, he has a good group, but he's just a bit low uh, most of the time. It's a little bit of lateral movement there from Alvarino, but still found the middle of the target. Yeah, well, he he does have a bit of an angular draw, so when he comes in from anchor, uh, there is a bit of lateral movement, and uh, the bow has to settle after that. So in the beginning of the shot, you'll always see uh, Miguel's bow uh, move a little bit, so you can see it here that he comes in from the side and then the stabilizer tip uh, always moves a little bit. And again, not a bad, not a bad showing here, but uh, Nesbitty has a chance to lock this set away for a 5-1 advantage if he shoots at 10. And he does shoot that 10 for another 29. That's three in a row. And the Italian leads by five set points to one. He really is a big game player. If you just look at his Olympic medals, that's uh, enough proof. Yeah, and, and the fact that he's been uh, doing this for, uh, what is it, one and a half decade at, at such a high level. I think uh, Mauro is one to... Uh, he hasn't been, over the years, he hasn't always been as consistent as, uh, as some of the other uh, archers. Um, but if he is in, in good shape, he is in very good shape. So he can, uh, he can really uh, defeat anyone on the field, really. Well, looking very confident and solid. There's not a huge amount wrong with Alvarino, though. No, no, he's shooting uh, actually quite a good match, but he's just not... Um, not as precise as we've seen him in other matches this year. Uh, we've seen him in occasions where he needed a 10 to uh, clinch a set uh, and just shooting a 30 uh, to, to, to win. Um, and it doesn't seem like he has that, that kind of vibe at this moment. Well, 5-1 lead for Mauro Nespoli from Italy against Miguel Alvarino from Spain. Alvarino will start set number four, and it's a must-win set for the Spaniard. Yeah, and again, it's not a bad shot, but it's just 
it's not going to cut it if uh, if Mauro is shooting the way he does. And all the Italian needs to do now is uh, match the scores that uh, Alvarino puts down, <laughs> or better them, as he does in this case. Well, an eight there. Using Chef's terminology, he's not going to cut it. Big opportunity here for Nespoli to put this one away now. And he is dialed in to the centre. Alvarino with his final arrow, almost certainly in this semi final. Hits a 10 for a 27. A 27 is all Nespoli needs to win. He's got 20 already. And it finishes with a perfect. What a way to win. 329s and a 30 for a 7-1 victory in the recurve men's individual semi-final number one. Warm, respectful hugs all round on the shooting line. It was it. A match that really was all about who was going to try and get through to the final here because both have qualified for the season finale and it's Nespoli again in big matches. He is a man that is tough to beat.